Well, thank you guys all for joining the, this IGEL community webinar. I'm very excited today to have ThinPrint and Henning Volkmeyer with us to talk about what's going on in the EUC printing space and, and give us a technical deep dive. Like I said, please ask questions. Use the questions piece or go to webinar. If you have anything at all, you know, let's see if we can stump him. And if we can, well, then Henning will take those and ask his experts, and we will get you answers. Uh, we will also be recording this webinar. So after the fact, uh, we'll get this thing posted up to the IGEL community Slack channel and what have you. Uh, I'm going to spend just a couple minutes talking about the IGEL community uh, for those who might not be members of the IGEL community. And then uh, Henning will, will get into the, the meat of this webinar and discuss printing. So Henning, can you advance the slides? Perfect. So if you're not familiar, one of the things that I'm responsible for at IGEL is a community. And the goal there is really to uh, to give some love to the techies, you know, to give the love to the people that are really out there and then the ground floor um, doing the doing the work, you know, making this stuff work, fixing the problems. And uh, and so we wanted to put together a, a community of folks so that we can help each other. Right. So, uh, you know, the power of the community is in each other. Uh, but what you get when you join the IGEL community is a lot of really great benefits, we hope. And we're seeing a lot of success out of them and a lot of great feedback. So we'll keep you up to date with what's latest in, from IGEL, right? So if there's a new product coming, we'll let you know if we can. Uh, once a product's released, we'll definitely let you know. We'll let you know what's doing or, you know, what's in that product. And if it makes sense, we'll even have a technical webinar about that. So we had a great one not long ago about one of our major releases uh, with Matthias Huber, who's actually on the line. Thanks for joining, Matthias. And uh, did a great job explaining, you know, what the latest is within that release. And we'll continue doing that as we move forward to keep you guys up to date. Um, also, really the heart of community is in the people. So we have a Slack channel, uh, slack.igelcommunity.com. Uh, and that'll log you. You have to join Slack if you're not already a member, and that'll log you directly into the IGEL community. And uh, that's really where everything is going on. We have over 640 some members right now, and over 10,000 different messages float back and forth in, in six months. But those 10,000 messages, not a mess. Uh, we have everything's uh, nicely organized into different channels uh, from um, the different products we have to even some stuff like chat, casual chit chat. And uh, so, you know, community is not just, hey, here's a question or here's a new product, but, you know, let's talk, right? So we're chatting in, the, in there, too. It's a lot of fun. We have upcoming technical webinars, like, for example, this one. We, of course, we record these and post those. If there's a new white paper that, you know, folks like you guys would be interested in, we let you know about those. We share those both within Slack and we have a LinkedIn group, too, there and uh, make sure that stuff gets out to you, right? Believe it or not, we also have a GitHub repository. Uh, so all the scripts and the profiles, et cetera, et cetera, that are being created by both us, you know, the IGEL folks, uh, IGEL SEs, and you guys. Um, in fact, we have a, a great gentleman from uh, Germany uh, who's actually really took the lead on this GitHub thing, and he's posted just tons of the stuff he's created. So we have that part of the community um, soon, uh, we're going to have a monthly technical newsletter. That's something I wouldn't say I've been dragging my feet on is that I just haven't managed to get to yet. But soon we'll have a monthly technical webinar, which is our technical newsletter, excuse me, that will sort of summarize everything. One more slide. And then we have some getting started guides. So if you're not familiar with IGEL, if you haven't, uh, um, you know, if you haven't deployed the product and you want to try, you know, I made it really simple for you guys. Step by step, screenshot by screenshot. If you want your mother-in-law to install the IGEL software platform and she has no clue about computers whatsoever, as long as she, she can see then she can follow the screenshots and it'll walk you through installing our backend, our management tool, our cloud gateway if you want. That's an optional component. And then, of course, the real powerhouse, which is the IGEL operating system. And we do that within the UDC, which is a nice little ISO image that you can deploy in a virtualized environment or repurpose a machine, right? And it'll even explain IGEL licensing, too. We have a firmware update guide uh, that'll walk you through how to do firmware updates. And we just finished uh, how to make IGEL OS beautiful. And I think one of the most, the coolest things about IGEL is that every, almost everything is configurable. So uh, we actually had one of our SEs make the IGEL OS look exactly like Mac OS, which I couldn't believe he did it. But it just proves the power of what, you know, the folks in Augsburg have built. So um, truly, a, truly amazing stuff. So one more slide. 
And on that note, um, well, we do have a roadmap. So uh, we're going to have a new uh, website coming uh, for IGEL community itself, sort of an archival place. We're going to have a VIP award, like an MVP CTP, uh, for the folks that are really contributing to the community and helping each other. Right. And so we'll award these guys for the class of 2019. And we'll do that probably Q4, right around Christmas time. Uh, if you guys would like to join, please join at igelcommunity.com. Uh, that'll take you to a nice landing page, give you a little bit more info about why to, why to join. I'll have the links to those documents I talked about. And uh, we have a, a Twitter account and all that. So that's pretty much the IGEL community. Um, please, if you're not already a member, please join. I think you'll absolutely love it. And I've, I don't, nobody usually complains about things like that, but I've had a tremendous amount of great uh, feedback. So I'm really, really happy about it. And I want to thank everyone that's a member that's on the line for uh, making that jail community a success because, uh, it, you know, it is a community. It's for the people, by the people. On that note, I'm really excited about, the, uh, excited to turn this thing over to, to Henning. And uh, Henning's a great guy, like I said, extremely smart. And uh, Thin Prince just an absolutely great company, another German company. So I've always said, if you if you want to do things right, well, just buy German and be done with it. So Henning, the the floor is yours. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for the introduction to the Agile community. Um, if anybody needs a impartial outside opinion, it's a place that I hang out every once in a while myself. And uh, it's really an interesting place. It's fun to see the interaction between everybody who's a member. Um, it's fun to see um, one of our oldest partners. We've been partners for a really, really long time with IGEL. Um, kind of built this community, built this excitement about the offerings that they have, about all the new things that IGEL has been doing um, over the last two or three years, really revolutionizing their own solutions, revolutionizing the ideas that are behind that. Um, it's truly fascinating to watch. And as Doug and I were speaking a couple weeks ago um, and thinking about this webinar, um, we kind of came to the conclusion that IGEL does a ton of really interesting endpoint management. Uh, for the devices that the users typically sit in front of. And um, at the same time, as we're trying to kind of connect our digital worlds with our more traditional physical world, um, we figured that the printer is actually a sort of an endpoint in the digital um, community, the digital world that we're building as well. And that what we're doing here at Tempen is really sort of an endpoint management um, for the printer as well. And we thought it would be kind of interesting to um, show the community, to show everybody who's interested uh, what that looks like, what the opportunities are at this point and how um, actually the expertise around printing um, is truly, truly valuable still. Um, I think a lot of people kind of walk by the printer in the office and kind of look at it as like, hell, I never use that thing. Um, but if you look a little bit closer, what the workflows are in a lot of organizations, um, what the requirements are in a lot of the organizations, um, I think um, you'll find that printing um, is tremendously valuable. Um, and um, I think what's also going to be an interesting takeaway from this is that for something that's been around as long as printing, um, there's actually a ton of innovation in the space as well to build on-premises solutions that include everything um, from your traditional data center all the way to uh, things that run on AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or whatever your preferred cloud provider is to true cloud solutions that allow you to just connect your data and your applications to printing um, much like you would connect your email via Gmail or your CRM system via Salesforce. Um, there's a lot of really interesting things going on. And I think I may have preempted some of what's on this slide, um, but I think it's really important. So I'll go through these couple points again. Printing is truly the easiest to use uh, user interface for a digital world. It bridges the gap between sometimes rather specific applications, rather complex applications that happen on someone's screen and the physical world. Um, assuming someone can read, someone can see, like Doug said earlier, you can hand a printout, whether that's a single page or it's an entire book to someone, 
And unless you build some super complex form, they will immediately know what to do with it and how to handle it and how um, to go about what they need to do based on that printout. Um, something that we may overlook sometimes in our more fast paced digital world, printing is very durable. Assuming you use decent paper, you can print something, stick it in a folder into a closet, pull it out a hundred years later and it will be right there, maybe with a slight hue of yellow, but it'll be right there to look at. You don't have to pay attention to whether file formats have to be converted along the way. You don't have to pay attention to whether the storage will actually survive that time frame. It's just something that you can pull out and access a record as if no time had actually passed in the meantime. If you're looking at certain industries like legal or healthcare, for example, um, printing is a core element of many of the established and proven workflows. And I know we all talk about disruption and reinventing and all those things, but there are certain things that don't necessarily get better just by changing them. And handing a patient a piece of paper with instructions on what they're supposed to do as they recover from surgery or handing someone a document that proves that they now own this house is an extremely valuable thing. And it's really important that we um, make sure we incorporate those workflows where they make sense and actually use those proven technologies to further drive innovation to have our solutions and our setups reach a larger audience than what we could do if um, we were to just do something digital. Um, we've had some interesting debates here internally over how we word our strategy and how we communicate this to um, people. And the go-to was always to say ThinPrint provides innovative solutions around printing. And really, that's true. But if we're going back to the, you walk down the hallway, you look at the printer thing that I mentioned earlier, what really matters is that we help you drive innovation in your company by connecting the digital elements that really drive your company forward to proven not so digital elements that also make sure that those digital workflows and digital applications that you're building are stable and usable. Um, some of the challenges around printing are more or less technical. Um, one thing that obviously always comes to mind um, is the cost of equipment and supplies. I think it's been probably 30 or 40 years that we've been trying to talk about a paperless office. And while that's nowhere clear, uh, close to a reality, um, it, mean, it still means that we're trying to reduce unnecessary waste around printing. We're obviously trying to reduce cost along the way. Um, but what the, the supplies and the printers themselves are one cost, but really what I think is typically overlooked is the cost of actually managing the environment, making sure the printers are up to date, making sure you can do maintenance before something breaks, making sure users can actually connect to the printers and use them making sure that the reliability and performance is up to par of what users are expecting. If you have a print process that's far too slow and it takes too long for the user to see a result and they hit print again, that printout for the one document that you needed just got twice as expensive because the job got printed twice because the user thought that um, nothing was happening, they just hit print again and in the end, they ended up with two copies of the exact same document where they really only needed one. And as we're looking towards um, running our data centers no longer in physical buildings that we own, but we're doing AWS or Azure, or we're running applications on mobile devices rather than traditional Macs or PCs, um, as we're using thin clients more and more, there's truly a lack of support for innovative use cases um, from printing. And that's where um, solutions like ThinPrint come in to help you make sure you can use this proven traditional print workflow with those innovative use cases that you spend a lot of time, energy, and brain on um, to successfully develop. And that kind of gets us back to 
what I mentioned earlier a little bit when I um, explained our relationship to IGEL, um, printing is really an endpoint management element, and it's a very specific one. So it makes sense that you have a specific solution for that and not just tie it in with um, whatever other more user-centric or user-device-centric endpoint management you're using. But fundamentally, it's a very similar story. More and more of the backend tasks are moving to the cloud. That means managing the devices that are actually in the IT environment or in the environment in general becomes a, the most critical IT function. You have to make sure that all of the devices from the IGLFM client to their screen, to their printer, that all of those function and that they function at a performance level that actually satisfies the organization's needs. Uh, Microsoft is migrating away from System Center. I think we've seen some interesting announcements there over the last couple of months. Um, and um, I think we'll see more towards the end of the year. Um, IGEL is offering its universal management suite as a very, very interesting um, and very capable offering to manage the user-centric endpoints. And we want to be your partner to manage those print endpoints. And for that, um, we actually have a couple of different solutions that I'll just touch on here really quickly since we are trying to be more technical um, in all of this. Um, Easy Dash to manage printing directly on the endpoint. It's a cloud-based solution to install and configure drivers directly on a user's machine and then print direct IP from that printer, to, uh, from that endpoint to the printer so that the data, the management piece happens in the cloud, but the user's data actually always stays local to the network. Um, we have thin print mobile print to connect mobile endpoints like iPads or Android devices or iOS devices in general um, to the existing print infrastructure with an endpoint management solution or an MDM solution. Um, we have the Thin Print Hub as a central print endpoint for branch offices, for example, um, so that you can send print data to a, from a data center from your AWS or Azure cloud to a central endpoint in a branch office or remote site and then distribute within that site's local network and have one device or several devices for load balancing and high availability to really um, be able to uh, manage that one endpoint and have an easy access to that remote site. Um, we can provide printing as the entire print process from the cloud via easy so that you have a service that your endpoints simply connect to. And we have the product that we're probably best known for, the ThinPrint engine that provides printing with the required reliability, security, and performance, um, primarily for uh, remote applications, VDI, RDS, um, service provider type applications um, where the application and the data are largely processed centrally. That could just as well be your EMR system, for example, as well, um, and to then send the data out to the individual printers so that the users have the devices that um, or the, the printouts that they need. Um, I wanted to take a quick break here and look at um, printing as a service or enterprise print management because we think there are very different use cases for different type of environments based on what the actual use cases are. Um, the more or the larger an environment becomes, the more we think it benefits from a printing as a service type offering, whether that's something that we offer directly via our cloud offerings or whether that's something that um, we uh, help you build within your own network based on some of our more on-premise type products. It is the best way to deliver printing as a central and critical function of the overall IT environment because you are only managing the intricate pieces 
like drivers that we'll look at in a little bit, like the actual print paths, for example. Um, you're managing all of this centrally rather than having to manage it on endpoints or rather than having to have endpoints that you can actually manage printing on. Um, if you're looking at an environment where a user is using an IGEL thin client to connect to an application and you're trying to keep this endpoint as easy and as secure and as well to manage as possible, it does not make sense to route a complicated data intensive, resource intensive process like printing um, through this tiny device that you're trying to keep simple and secure. It makes sense to make sure that job goes directly to the printer that the user actually um, needs. This type of environment gives you a lot more security. It gives you a lot more control. It allows you to keep endpoints simple and interchangeable, but that also means that it makes it very easy to have users roam around in the environment, whether you have a retail environment where the district managers are traveling from store to store to check on whatever is going on there, whether you have a healthcare system where doctors and nurses are moving to see patients, um, whether you have a construction business where you're going from construction site to construction site, the simpler the actual endpoint piece in a larger or complex environment, the easier it is to provide the reliability, performance, and control um, that the environment actually needs. Let's see if I can actually get to the next slide. Well, can you still hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. It's, I, I was on mute. Um, did it not moving? The slides are not moving. Hmm. Find out what's going on there. Let's blame it on Apple. Oh, you lost keyboard. Did you see that? Yeah, I turned it off and on. Uh, you know, the old trick in the IT security book or IT support book. If it doesn't work, reboot. I guess that may be my only option. Well, don't I'll reboot because we lose you at that point. <laughs> huh. Not seen this happen in a very long time. Can you move with your mouse? You should be able to right-click on the screen, and, and uh, I think you can go back and forth with right-click, can't you? Yeah, it would appear that... Uh, PowerPoint died on me somehow. Well, that's fun. You love Snoopy. Well, what's an IT presentation without a reminder that there's a reason why we all do what we do? That's I remember going out doing tech work. Uh, this was been in the what mid nineties and. Uh, I would sit there and somebody would complain, well, I don't understand this, why this doesn't work. I don't understand. I don't understand. And I'd say, well, I'd say two things. One, welcome to computers. And two, this is why I'm employed. Otherwise, if everything worked, I wouldn't be here. So, I would so agree. But I guess we uh, semi-embarrassingly recovered. Cool. Um, so I will uh, return to my show here. Perfect. And um, before you get going, guys, if you do have questions, don't forget to, to, to put your questions in the questions piece. So handing it to your floor again. Thank you very much. Um, also wanted to point out that there are really a couple different ways how we can architect a print environment. And maybe with this um, one quick side note, um, we are going as deeply technical as we think we can go here in about 45 minutes or so. Uh, ultimately, we could take this to a bits and bytes and services level, but I don't think this is particularly helpful for the community at large. I want to make sure that you have a technical understanding of what your options are for the print needs in your environment and in, in what you do on a daily basis so that we can then um, if necessarily, explore the bits and byte level um, and make sure that what you're trying to build 
um, will actually work to your specifications. Um, over the years, um, print management uh, or print delivery has actually um, evolved quite a bit. Um, from an architectural point of view, there are really two primary ways to build an environment. One is from the endpoint directly to a printer. That typically used to be a scenario um, that was really tedious to manage, but that has changed over the last year or two years. Um, and then the from an endpoint to a print service to a printer, um, we have seen a lot more options come up there. Um, there's the traditional more print server-based um, solution to all the way to a cloud-based service that connects users, devices, and their printers. Um, all of these are valid. Um, I think the print server over the last couple of years may have gotten a little bit of a bad reputation, but I think that's largely, or I'm sure that's largely for the lack of um, knowledge around proper management tools for those types of environments. The fundamental concept, like I mentioned a slide ago before PowerPoint died, um, is very sound. It is very useful for large scale environments because it truly allows you to build a private cloud or on-premise type printing as a service in your environment. We no longer have to worry about drivers on endpoints, configurations on endpoints, um, and we'll get to why drivers um, are so incredibly annoying here in a little bit. Um, the other two things that are important to keep in mind, and I think I largely pointed that out, I just want to make sure we have those categories separate, are that there's two primary ways to actually deliver um, print architecture. The one is your more traditional private cloud service that can exclude, um, extend all the way into Azure, AWS. Actually, um, those become extremely important as you move into Azure or AWS with more centralized applications. And then a um, published or shared cloud service um, that you can really connect to, um, like you would connect to a Gmail, like you would connect to a Salesforce, um, and uh, have your application and your users reap the benefits of someone else running the environment for you. Both have their advantages and disadvantages when it comes to um, the amount of control that you have over the service, the amount of control you need to have over the service, the amount of work you need to put into it. Um, but they're fundamentally very interesting options that you should spend some time looking into. Um, a lot has changed here in the last two years um, in the overall industry. Um, it certainly has on our side, but there are options that have literally have not existed two years ago. And if you don't know what those are, um, spend some time with us or someone who's knowledgeable about printing um, and see what options you have because they really make it a lot easier for you to innovate in your environment. Not again. No. Um, maybe a couple of recent developments, first on the software side and then on the hardware side. Um, direct IP or endpoint to printer printing has become a lot more manageable, especially with cloud solutions like um, Easy Dash um, that have built-in driver stores that eliminate the need to go out and look for drivers. You can really um, just install an agent on a user's endpoint device, connect it to or have it connect to your instance of um, a cloud service like Easy Dash, and within that cloud service, you make the necessary adjustments. You have your users, you have your user access and permissions, um, you have your um, printers set up with their respective configurations like IP addresses um, with the necessary profiles to make sure that you can define who's allowed to print duplex uh, or who's allowed to print simplex versus forcing people to do duplexing, who can do color, who can only do black and white, all those things that um, really give you granular control over the environment without having to manage 
the printing directly on each and every individual endpoint. That is a great simplification. Um, something that everybody who's modernizing their environment should know is that with the end of life of server 2008 R2, Microsoft depreciated the print server cluster. So as you're looking what to do with those types of environments, how to update those servers, how to keep the, the operating system supported. Um, be mindful of the fact that server virtualization for printing is at best a stopgap measure. Um, you can certainly do snapshots of your print server and then relate back, uh, revert back to an image. Um, if something goes wrong, but it doesn't allow you to actually fundamentally address the issues that are underneath the surface. Um, and it makes it really difficult to do things like load balancing and true uh, failover for actual business continuity. There are much better solutions out there from third parties that are well worth the investment um, because they also make it a lot easier from a IT or technical perspective to maintain servers, to take them out of service when you want to do maintenance and not have to do maintenance at three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Um, I think we can all find better things to do at that point in time. Um, a lot of the parties in the print space over the last couple of years have worked on security improvements, um, which is generally a very good thing, but they still require uh, that you take a close look at what it is that you actually want to secure. One thing that everybody should be doing is making sure that whenever you share printers in your environment, that's an SMB3 share so that those can be encrypted. Um, other things like pull printing or follow me printing, um, where you authenticate at the printer before you can actually um, before you can actually retrieve the printout, um, offer very different architectures. A lot of the OEM printer provided solutions rely on hard drives or storage that is built into the printer. Um, that can be somewhat of a tricky proposition because those are typically fairly easily accessible. So be mindful as you design security around printing if that is something that you want to allow, or if you would rather have uh, the um, the job stored encrypted on a server somewhere where they're released uh, once the user authenticates at the printer and not have sensitive data on a bajillion different devices that are spread out through your environment um, that might just be sitting there. Um, printer manufacturers are really good at building printers, but security is kind of a difficult subject. Um, again, see if there aren't third-party solutions out there that are much more um, useful for what you're trying to do that are ultimately also more cost-effective. And um, of course, there's the whole um, question on printer endpoint management, uh, making sure you actually have some insight on what's going on and their printers using SN, SMTP and SNM, uh, sorry, SNMP uh, to uh, monitor the status of printers, receive alerts when something is going on on those printers, when toner is getting low, um, to make sure you can switch out those cartridges rather than waiting for users um, to complain back to their IT department that something is not quite right. Um, and then you have a, the urgency on the IT side to get to the problem immediately, and you have the frustration on the user and the business side because they have to wait and um, until whatever problem they just reported is fixed. On the printer side, um, we have seen, uh, or on the hardware side, we have seen some interesting um, developments. Um, we're seeing more and more multi-function devices being deployed, meaning the devices that are scanners, copiers, fax machines, and maybe one day a coffee maker as well. Those are generally great devices, um, but they introduce a new level of complexity um, into the environment, especially as they propagate into more of the smaller side of the SMB space. There's a lot of 
um, requirements around those printers um, that someone needs to understand, that someone needs to manage. Um, printers are becoming more computerized, meaning they can run applications uh, on those larger touchscreens that they're being equipped with. Again, an interesting uh, development because it allows companies like us to provide, say, end-to-end -end encryption all the way into the printers, but it also means that from a user perspective, there's added training needed, there's added understanding needed of what um, is actually possible. IT needs to understand those devices, um, both an opportunity and a little bit of a challenge. Um, just an interesting fact, um, inkjects are making a return to the business market. I don't think that's fundamentally something that impacts how you're running um, your organization, but as you're maybe acquiring printers and looking to change out things in the environment, it's an interesting to look at those. They've become really high quality, and um, it might be an interesting, very, very cost-effective um, solutions for environments um, where maybe a laser printer might actually a little bit overkill. Um, yes, there are, of course, laser printers that only cost a little between like $100 and $200, um, but you also pay for those with the supplies later on. You pay for those with um, a lack of features. There's not a whole lot of management tools involved and um, so the inkjets can really be an interesting alternative. And then again, I kind of covered this along with the last slide because hardened software you go hand in hand. Um, there is an interest, uh, an increased focus on security for printers as well. But like I mentioned, it comes with caveats that you should look into, um, especially storing sensitive data on uh, a lot of distributed devices throughout the environment rather than storing it centrally, centrally while it's at rest um, might not be the best option in that scenario. Um, as you're looking into these things, again, educate yourself, talk to some people that know about printing. Um, there are different options available to build exact or deliver exactly what you need for your environment. Um, both on-prem and cloud-based solutions. Um, to pick up the latest IGEL motto a little bit, I wanted to put this slide together and show you where the opportunities are in printing. There's a lot of opportunity in printing. Um, cloud-based printing or is an opportunity as a service offering to offer to your clients if they have partners amongst our audience but it's also something that is important, and I'll get into that in more detail, um, as applications and data are moving into services like Azure or AWS. Um, the same goes for application providing around printing, uh, around Citrix, uh, VMware, Microsoft, RDS, Parallels. Um, there are a lot of interesting opportunities um, to really make printing better and make it more cost effective We're far beyond like a debate from 20 years ago or 15 years ago about uh, things not necessarily working right but or in a technical sense but there's also working right in a business sense meaning you have the proper connectivity of networking of security and compliance business continuity and all those things um, to make sure that the Citrix environment, the VMware environment, the RDS environment that you're building is as cost effective as possible. And there are um, a couple interesting case studies on our website that really show how paying minimal attention to printing makes an environment infinitely cheaper. And it doesn't have to be a 150,000 user environment for that. Um, to be true, you can see those um, savings very immediately, um, even for smaller environments with just a hundred or a couple hundred users, um, especially if you're doing thin clients and you have to do resource intensive processes like printing um, directly on those powerful and expensive uh, servers that are actually running your application and data in um, your private cloud. A um, couple 
things that I wanted to mention. I think I have to speed up my talk here a little bit. Um, there are very interesting options to better connect printing in branch and remote sites. Um, we offer this little device that's called the Thumbprint Hub that allows you to connect uh, a remote site or a branch office to your central data center or wherever you run your applications without a VPN, um, especially as we're seeing um, customers use Citrix Gateway, the Terminal Server Gateway, um, the equivalent from VMware that I can unfortunately never the, remember the name for. VPNs are becoming more and more of a hassle and they're more and more run for specialty type applications. It's a lot easier to have a Thinprint Hub in a remote site. The Thinprint Hub uses SNMP to find out what printers are in the environment, uh, records those, builds an outbound connection via SSL into the data center or um, DMZ, connects to the print infrastructure that's uh, built into, into the data center. Uh, it reports the printers that are in the environment, automatically creates them so that they can be assigned to the users. And then with this outbound connection coming from the branch office or remote site, um, you have a connection that's open that the data center can respond to and deliver a job for the user whenever that user actually calls upon it. It's open for batch printing to happen um, in the background whenever necessary. If you're thinking healthcare systems, for example, that need to provide data to um, clinics so they know what their patient schedules are for the next day, even if the internet connection goes down. And all of this happens with a simplicity where you ship a device to a branch office or remote site and with a network cable included and say, go find your modem, plug the one cable that fits into that modem, into the set modem, plug the other one into a power outlet, and then the environment is set to go. The device can be centrally managed. Um, and it's really the, the simplest and easiest way to connect a remote site or branch office without having to rely on expensive VPNs. Um, mobile printing is a fairly wide field. Um, it's kind of challenging because there's not really necessarily a standard that works across all devices, even if we just differentiate between Android and iOS devices. Those use different printing standards that have to be supported by the printers, which is generally true for most more modern printers, but there are no management features, there are no security features. It's generally a very quickly changing environment. And in the spirit of the endpoint management that kind of got us into this entire conversation, um, it makes a lot more sense to either have a, an on-prem server or uh, a cloud service like Easy that you can use to connect your devices to the endpoint and have the proper management features in between uh, so that um, you can decide who gets to use which printer, what features can they use for that particular printer, uh, and not have a random free-for-all in the environment. And fundamentally, the setup is very easy. Um, both um, you can, with, uh, with something like uh, ThinPrint Mobile Print, you would ultimately use your um, device management system for um, your Android and iOS devices to roll out an application and a profile to the user's devices. That profile includes the um, information for Google Print or AirPrint so that the devices know where to connect to. They send a job to the mobile print server. The mobile print server then has access to the environment um, and can pass those jobs onto the actual printer. So you, you can provide a OS native print experience to your users without having to actually enable AirPrint and Google Print on the individual printers um, and have the proper uh, management tools in between. It's a very powerful concept um, if you 
thinking about um, building um, more applications and delivering more applications um, to uh, tablets, to smartphones, uh, to make sure that those innovative applications in the end can very, very easily produce a piece of paper that someone can take home to show ownership of their house that they can take home to know what they need to do once they're done with surgery. Uh, very, very useful to help you keep your digital innovation connected to um, what people are used to and what they can easily use. Um, secure printing, um, we, I'll keep this one a little bit shorter because we touched on it a little bit um, during the hardware and software developments. Um, it, in our opinion, it makes the most sense to um, store jobs centrally encrypted based on the user's SID on a server in your data center, wherever you're running it on-prem or Azure AWS, um, I guess that's always implied, um, and only release this when a user authenticates at the printer. Um, there's a number of different authentication methods available. It can be running an application um, on those multifunction devices that I mentioned earlier that have the ability to run those, like. HP Future Smart Printers, for example, some next smart printers, um, some I think Conicum and Alter printers have the ability, and some others. Um, the easiest solution for the more digitally inclined people is to just use a smartphone to scan a QR code on the printer. The QR code is where you are. The application that scans the QR code is where you, uh, who you are then release the job that also gives you a lot of added functionality around picking the jobs, changing job orders, deleting jobs that you don't actually need anymore. And then last but not least, the more traditional um, badge swipe with an RFID reader. Um, those can be connected to any printer, whether it's a $29 inkjet or a $2,900 multifunction printer with them print. Um, the user simply swipes their card the first time um, when they're not yet enrolled in the system. The uh, printer will print instructions on how to get enrolled by going back to uh, or going to a website link for an internal website, logging in with their domain credentials, and then um, typing in, I think, a six-digit code that uh, immediately registers their um, RFID card and uh, they can then go back to the printer and pick up the jobs that they need to with very, very little management. Um, on IT side, both with a ton of security and flexibility because the jobs are stored centrally, they're encrypted, um, they are separated out by the SID of the user to make sure that they're, um, they don't get mixed up. Um, they're not too easily identifiable who they belong to should someone get access to that server. And um, it also provides the ability to pick up those jobs wherever necessary in the environment so long as that printer is equipped with a proper authentication method. As, again, if we're thinking retail, healthcare, legal, it could be very, very, or it is very, very helpful um, to have that flexibility to go wherever into the environment and um, just pick up a job. For real? I may have uh, some issues with PowerPoint here. It crashed on you again. Oh, we'll speed this up a little bit. Yeah, Matthias. I do have a couple questions for you. Or sure. Do you want me to save them for the end, or I can ask them now? That's a perfect interruption that uh, was provided to us here. Okay, perfect. So uh, would ThinPrint uh, support third-party integrators like ClipCard? Clipper Card, excuse me. Uh, I don't know that particular brand name, but I'm going to assume yes. Yeah. Um, this is a really good question. Uh, how does thin print, well, not that the other one wasn't, but, uh, how does thin print help with 3d print workloads? There's really not a ton that can be done in that area yet because 3d workload, uh, print workloads are so specific. Um, it's an interesting area that we're looking into. Um, but at the moment, 
um, especially as fast as that space is developing, um, that's actually a scenario where the best option is to have a um, driver directly on the user's endpoint and then print directly to the printer. Um, I'd have to look a little bit into um, what those drivers look like at the moment, but I would assume that something like um, Easy Dash, for example, could distribute and configure those drivers onto the user's workstation. Um, it would depend on how many hundreds of users do 3D printing in the environment if the uh, if a service like Easy Dash makes sense just for that. But if you are looking to manage printing anyway, um, then I think that's something that we could at least help with making sure that as those drivers iterate and newer versions become available, that those automatically get rolled out to the user workstations. Sounds good. Do we have any other questions at this point? Not at this point, but guys, uh, we're getting closer to the end or almost to the end. So please, if you have any more questions, use the questions piece and Henning will answer them. And Henning, please continue. All right. Um, one of the things I've mentioned a couple times over the last almost hour is that drivers are extremely annoying um, and that really hasn't changed much over the years. It takes forever to find the right driver that really works with all of your application. It seems very simple. You just go to the manufacturer's website, look at the operating system, look at the latest version, install the drivers, and everything should work. And then it doesn't because you have some specific application that's maybe a little bit older. Maybe it has specific requirements towards a particular form. Um, so using solutions like ThinPrint that present a universal interface to the user but still support all the native uh, finishing options um, might be a much better option because it cuts down on the number of drivers that you need. You keep the drivers centrally on one operating system and one iteration of that operating system. As long as you know that works, you'll be fine and you don't have to figure out if that driver A works on the two different iterations of Windows 10 that you're running and then some other weird uh, Windows 7 installation that's still around somewhere for a specific use case. Um, drivers proliferate over time, meaning um, as printers come into the environment, typically it's just a new driver gets added and the old one doesn't get deleted um, or maybe both printers are used from that user's workstation and drivers share resources on the same machine, but they have different requirements towards those resources that creates a ton of conflicts that result into strange errors that no one can really identify or fix. And um, they also need to be kept 100% identical across all of your systems or you will run into all sorts of issues, uh, drivers crashing, spoolers crashing, that sort of thing. And the as tempting as universal drivers are, they have their a very strong set of limitations. Um, printer manufacturers are very creative with the features that they built into their printers. And it makes it really difficult even for them to keep track of what all they need to support in those universal drivers. And it doesn't necessarily um, always actually work all that well. And you're better off with specific drivers for a specific model, especially in the um, multifunction device kind of space. Um, and then keeping the number and versions of those drivers to the absolute minimum in your environment. Uh, their animations. Then the last, I think it's one of the last slides anyway, um, why are we talking about printing in uh, environments that are run on AWS and Azure? Um, one primary reason is that um, networking becomes a cost factor. Again, it's no longer just a cable that you can use as much as you want. Um, data volume costs money again, and printing is absurdly data intensive. Um, so there are some of the older technologies um, that we developed a long time ago around compression, job streaming, caching that are becoming much more widely popular again to 
really reduce costs in those type uh, of cloud environments. And the other is that cloud offers an unprecedented opportunity to scale, meaning rather than building a group of printer or one large scale print server that's running all of the time, it is probably much more cost effective to build a couple of small servers. And then as users are not in the office overnight, you have one running to provide basic print or print functionality for the one or two users that might still be working, then spin up additional machines as users get to the office, cut a few back down as everybody goes to lunch and bring them back up. That saves a ton of resources, but it requires fairly sophisticated technologies around high availability and load balancing that we can provide. Um, but it's both of those technologies are great to really reduce the cost of those cloud environments. And fundamentally, we're all in business. So the less money we spend on infrastructure, the more money we can spend on innovation, on building our businesses. Uh, so as much as it might seem like a contradiction to mix super modern cloud technology with printing, um, there's actually a ton of opportunity here. And just a couple final thoughts um, on how you actually define uh, and design an enterprise print solution. Um, it comes down to a lot of the same things that you um, do in your uh, overall solution designs for other things as well. You have to make sure you know your requirements. You have to know the strategies for apps, data, and devices that very much influences what type of printing you offer, what type of connections you need, what type of gaps you need to bridge or, or bridges you need to get a bridge uh, different technologies. Um, you have to know your network layout so you can determine where existing connections are that you can use so you can determine where connections are that are actually really too elaborate and too expensive for what they should be doing. Um, so that you can determine where it's cheaper to invest into a technology that reduces data volume versus investing into just a, a faster network connection. And overall, it's tempting to go and say like, oh, I buy most of my printers from company XYZ. Let me see what kind of solutions they have. I'm sure those companies are great at making printers, but managing the entire print environment is typically not their strength. You don't want a solution that can just manage those printers from one manufacturer. You don't want one solution um, that's really proprietary to another manufacturer for another niche application. And um, then the second to last point there is really important. Today's requirements may not work tomorrow. We're all working in this digital transformation space. We need to make sure that if we have a great idea that work, that will really drive our business forward, that we can still connect that to those proven workflows that we still need in the environment. And that's where third-party print solutions like um, ThinPrint really shine and help you innovate, help you connect what you're looking to build tomorrow to the technologies that we had today and yesterday. Overall, I want to say though, it's really not that difficult. And myself and our colleagues are here to help you. If you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them now, feel free to answer them later. Um, you're more than welcome to, I'll skip this one. Um, you'll reach out to us. Um, if you did not write down my email or phone number, Doug Brown will be happy to connect us. Um, we see printing as a very valuable piece in today's environment and we see it staying relevant. Um, so let's have a conversation and explore the options for the things that you're looking to do. Henning, thank you so much. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, you're the, the one German that did really well today. So I don't know if you guys watch World Cup, but Germany lost. I'm crying here. So uh, <laughs> Germ yeah, I, I'm speechless. So that was a uh, that was absolutely wonderful, Henning. Absolutely wonderful, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And please, if you have any questions, um, let let us know real quick. And if not, we'll call it an episode. So 
um, and good 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 job Sweden for the Swedes on the line. So I'm American that's been transplanted to Germany. So I'm learning soccer. Anything else to add, Henning? That was just brilliant. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Thank you. So, okay, here's a question. I think, uh, let me, uh, okay, so it says, not clear on where the print job is queued and converted to native print uh, printer language on an iGel thin client hosted session in the data center slash cloud or on the iGel. Make sense? Yeah, ideally, uh, there's two options. The least ideal option is to run the driver and the conversion process directly on the application server or a virtual desktop. The much better solution is to outsource that printing uh, process to a tr to what's traditionally called a print server, um, ideally one that you install ThinPrint on, so you don't have to have native drivers on any of the virtual infrastructure. Um, it saves a ton of resources on the servers that are running your applications. Um, you can have a much higher user, den user density. Um, it makes those servers a lot more reliable because they don't see any of those weird conflicts between drivers that can crash um, certain system services and then take down um, some of the overall performance of that machine um, and then send the job from the server that converted it directly to the printer uh, that the user is looking to print to, um, especially in thin client environments as much as we can support USB attached printers or locally attached printers to iGel thin clients, I would recommend bypassing that scenario. It, significantly improves the overall environment performance and it makes it um, a lot easier to manage the agile endpoints. I love it. Come on guys, let's stump Henning. <laughs> so uh, let me know if you have any more questions. If not, we'll call this an episode. Henning again, I really enjoyed this. I look I, this is really great stuff. And guys, the other thing too is if you have any recommendations for things you would like us to do webinars on, any deep dives you'd like to go into, uh, if you like this webinar, let us know. If you did not like this webinar, definitely let us know. And it, to me, the IGEL community is all about you guys, right? Uh, well, it's about each other, really, but it's it's mostly about you know the people. So uh, we want to do things that will help you uh, do your jobs better and and. Uh, and support um, you know all of everything within your environment, not just you know the IGL endpoint itself. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this, Henning. I really truly enjoyed this. This is absolutely brilliant. So great, absolutely great job. I'm very very impressed. You always impress me though. So well, what did I expect, right? I, I try sometimes, but I uh, still uh, am happy to hear that this was interesting. Thank you for the invitation. It was great to be a part of the Agile community for an hour or so, and I'll go back to being a participant on Slack and all the other communication channels. Absolutely. Thank you again. And guys, please, again, if you're not a member of the Agile community, join www.igelcommunity.com. And on that, that note, don't forget to visit ThinPrint and reach out to um, Henning if you have any questions. And uh, I thank you guys all for taking the time to uh, be a part of this webinar. So uh, have a great day, everybody. Thank you.